Hi, my name is Josh Haftel, and I'm a product manager at Adobe working on Lightroom. Today, we're going to show you a number of videos on the all-new Lightroom CC. Lightroom CC is a new ecosystem of products designed around enabling you to organize, edit, and share your photos anywhere that you are. I'm going to start off in this first video by showing you the interface of Adobe Lightroom CC, as well as how to start off by adding photos into your system. So to begin with, I'm going to go to the top left, select the plus, and you can see I've got a couple of options to adding photos. I can either browse for some photos on my disk, or I can select a connected device like a camera, or in this case, I have an SD card plugged into my computer that I can then select images from. So I'm going to click on that SD card. You'll see a number of photos showing up, and these photos were all shot on a recent trip where I was in Cuba, and it gives me a couple of options. So to start off with, I want to select the album that I want to add these photos into. Selecting an album it helps me be able to organize the images later on. So I'm going to start off by calling this Cuba trip because that's basically what it is. Click create. Now it's automatically selected all of the photos on the card, which is what I want to do. But in case you didn't want to do that, you could deselect the select all option or you could select each photo individually. But in this case, I want to import all of these photos and I'm just going to click this add 150 photos button. This is going to start adding these photos into my album that I just created. All right, so I've got these images now imported from my SD card. They're now inside of Lightroom CC, and you can see at the bottom left, I've got Cuba Trip, and you can see all the images now are imported directly into this Cuba Trip. One of the cool things about Lightroom CC is as they've been imported, they're also being uploaded. The full resolution raw files are being uploaded to the cloud. That makes them safe and backed up, but it also means that I can access them on my iPhone or Android device or tablet or even through lightroom.adobe.com or Lightroom for Apple TV. So I've got a lot of ways of viewing and working with my photos and we'll go into those in a later lessons. For now though, let's take a quick look at the different parts of the interface so you have an idea of how everything fits together. On the left hand side, I've got a way of being able to expand and collapse the organizational tool. So in case you don't want to take up some screen real estate, you can just close that out of the way. But just to take a look at what's inside of there, we've got two sections. The My Photo section, it breaks it down into how you can see all of your photos. So the All Photos just shows you one big pile of all of your photos, whereas Recently Added will break it down into a number of recently imported states or by date which will show you how all of your photos fit into a chronological timeline. Mm -hmm. Beyond that we've got their album section and inside of here I can see all the different albums and folders that I created. So the first stop I created a folder for 2016 and then I created a number of albums and these are just albums that I created to help me find and organize my photos. And again we'll go into some of the organizational tools in a later video. But let's go through the rest of the interface. At the top we've got a search bar and and in here I can actually just start typing things in and you can see is if I click in here it says search Cuba trip and one of the cool things about this is I don't even have to tag anything and it automatically knows so if I type in sunset it's going to return back to me all the sunsets that are inside of this section but again we'll go through the search stuff a little bit later to the right of that we've got a filter tool which allows me to filter things down based off of certain information we'll go into that later as well I then have a way of sharing photos so I can either save it to my disk or send it to Facebook Book. I've got uh, my cloud icon, which gives me a chance to see what's the current status of the synchronization and interaction with the Creative Cloud. You can see that I've opted for the 10 terabyte upgrade because uh, I do share a lot of photos and I've got a lot of images that I still am adding into Creative Cloud as, as time goes by. You can also see here, you can access download links for each of the different versions of Lightroom, as well as the ability to pause and play the syncing of your interaction with the servers. Beyond that, we've got access to editing controls, cropping, healing brush, the brush, the linear gradient, the radial gradient. I can go in here next and say, take a look at the ability to add in keywords. And this is a, a great way of being able to add in explicit keywords. So in addition to the automatic keywording tools that we've got, you can also type in your own keywords if you're so inclined. And then as well as being able to take a look at information about this particular image. And you'll have a chance to add a title, caption, copyright information, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all really, really useful tools. And again, we'll go into those a little bit later. Along the bottom, we've got two different kinds of grids that you can look at. Now, this is the photo grid, so it keeps each photo as large as possible. The next one is the square grid. And what's good about the square grid is that it gives you a chance to see lots of information about these images. So if I flag an image as pick or I rate it as a number of stars, you'll see those things showing up beneath the photo. So it gives you a quick visual way of being able to see which images have you picked and star rated. 
And then to the right of that, I've got the ability to switch into the detail mode, uh, which gives me access to showing that image one-to-one. -one. And then I can go through and even use the film strip to select different photos. Beneath that here, I've got the ability to add a flag rating or reject the image, add a star rating to it. I can select the zoom ratio, so fit or fill or one-to-one. -one. And I also have the ability to close or show the film strip as well as showing the before and after. I haven't edited the image yet, so the before and after won't do much. But that's really it for the basic level of the interface. In the next videos, we're going to be going into how to use a lot of these different tools and we're going to start off by organizing, moving on to editing and sharing and then using the rest of the ecosystem. Hope this helped you a lot and see you on the next video.